back to Goodness and Gracious. I'm Chrissy. I'm Renee. I almost said I'm Renee. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were supposed I, to have a new entrance. I know. That's, this I, is a new beginning. Uh, I don't know how to change podcast. it. I don't know how to change it. Because how else know. do you say, welcome back to Goodness and Gracious, I'm Chrissy. Unless I said, welcome back to Gracious and Goodness, I'm Renee. <laughs> you know? How are you going to change it? I don't know. We'll have to think we'll of have it. To, we'll have to think. We'll yeah. have to seek some counsel we'll, we'll see. on it. Yeah. If yeah. you got any ideas, you can message us on Facebook yeah. or something. <laughs> I mean, I mean. Yeah, da, 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 da. Well, I we said know. I was going to bring a pogo stick in for you. Mm. but <laughs> You were going to bring a pogo, <laughs> pogo stick in for me. I Yeah, I told you I wasn't going to do it. You said you would. Did I? I thought so. I'm going to have to go back and listen because <laughs> I don't ever remember agreeing to that. I'm sure ever. that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> Well, in our last episode, we talked about, because it's still January, Yes, uh, resolutions, um, and more importantly, being resolute. Uh, We mentioned some of the people from the Bible that stood out as being resolute, Daniel, his friends, and Paul. Um, I put gum in my mouth, and I really shouldn't have done that. So you guys are all (laughs) I'm going to be doing it. Spit it it out now. I I, Nope, I'm not doing it. Put it in one of their cups. Swallow it. (laughs) <laughs> Did you swallow it? No. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. That was your phone. It was my phone. How in the world did that happen? Okay. Should Forget. We start from the top. No, nope, no. Nope. I think it's good. We're just gonna go with it. Okay. We're gonna be resolute. Do We're you want to be... turn it off now? I don't know what. I yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what it was. I've never even heard that sound before. We're just going to leave it. Okay. Anyway. So. Back to the thought. Back to the thought. (laughs) We had been talking about Daniel, his friends, Paul, um, and them being resolute. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny that we talk about these people as if they are great people that really stand out as perfect examples of what God would have us to be. But we kind of act as if it's not attainable for us. Right. I don't, I don't it was know good for we, them back in the Bible right. days. Yeah, back then mm-hmm. it was fine. Right. Or, um, And I think sometimes we even, now we know that Daniel is real. We know that the Bible is real. But I think sometimes we think of them as you stories. Know, stories, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to, I don't ever want to portray that to anyone. Um, I firmly believe that Daniel was resolute. Um, his friends were resolute. Paul, all of the examples of the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I want to be that as well. Right. Um, I think that most of the time we think this way because we know us. I know me. Um, Like we know that in and of ourselves, we are not some of those words that we talked about in the last episode. Uh, We aren't admirably purposeful. We're not determined. We're not unwavering, obstinate, uncompromising, constant, etc. We're we're not any of those Mm. things. Oh, we have some of the other words that we talked nah. about, like stubborn, <laughs> adamant, I'm persistent, like any of those. <laughs> as well as others. Um, but we are those in a negative way. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't get us started. We'll go into a whole rendition. <laughs> we'll be here whole all day. rendition of it. Um, so no one other than God knows us better than us. Like, no one. Okay. Um, We like to excuse ourselves by saying, this is how God made me. Um, That's a lie from the devil. I used to say that about my temper. Yeah. This is just how God made me. It ain't never going to change. I mean, I still have it. But with his help, like I always say, it's calm. Right. Calm down a lot. But that's (laughs) not actually how God made us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, We we believe Satan about Mm -hmm. that. Um, The truth is, is that God made humans perfect. Right. Humans made humans fallen. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, but God made us perfect um, and we chose to not be that. Um, And now we're. Thanks to Adam and Eve. Yes. (laughs) Now we are a product of that. And although that is the truth, that is the truth. God has made a way for us to be um, pleasing and usable to him, even though we were made perfect. We're fallen. He still has a job for us to do. Um, but it, it really, it's not for the faint of heart. Mm-hmm. It really, really isn't. Um, honestly, it's really what separates the girls from the women, spiritually speaking. 
I gotta save the men from the boys. <laughs> We're not talking about them right now. We're talking about That's us. That's right. Um, so how do we come to a place where we are resolute, uncompromising, unwavering, stubborn, bold, but all of those in ways that are pleasing to God? The short answer, we have to go through some stuff. stuff. Yes, we do. Beautiful, um, beautiful stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I say all the time. I say it all the time. Life is not glamorous, no. but it is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And even in a spiritual way, um, spiritually speaking, life can be beautiful, right. even though it's not it's glamorous. How we, it's how we portray it and look, look at it. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Um, going through some stuff tends to get you all crossways, though, don't you think? Yep. It can make you doubt what you have been taught, and what you know. Um, I have a verse that I believe is not only the starting point, but it is also able to sustain us throughout anything that we're going through. Do you want to share that? Okay, sure. Matthew six thirty three. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I always go back to this verse um, when I when I can see that I'm veering from him or being uh, begin letting other things skew my thoughts and my actions. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a pretty simple command, and it is a command. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That sounds like a command to me. Mm-hmm. Um, the first step to being resolute is continually seeking him first, uh, especially when you are going through some stuff. Um, I think that muscles that don't get used, they don't get exercised. They don't get, if they don't get exercised, they don't, yeah. I'm starting now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it now. <laughs> they don't grow stronger and you're not able to be used in the capacity. They are not able to be mm-hmm. used in the capacity that they were designed for. And I think that's the same for us. Right. Well, for years I went through problems and they did not make me resolute because all I did was complain about the problems mm-hmm. and Oh, don't we all? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. where we look and, and go back to my old, my, basically I would complain and then just go back to my old self. It's like right. I wasn't growing or doing anything whatsoever. But then I started seeking the kingdom of heaven, like you talked about mm-hmm. first by reading, praying, growing closer to God, which is what we're supposed to be doing. Right. And then as I go through the problems, they help me become resolute. Not that I'm a- arrived. I'm striving, we like we are. always say. We yeah. It's definitely no fun going through the problems. <laughs> Not at all. No. But if we can hold on and picture how beautiful the end result will be, then we can learn to grow and have patience through the problems. Yes. But the um, key is to get us to, I mean, say, say we're sitting there counseling someone or whatever, and they're going through this problem. You need to get them to see the beautiful picture of how it's going to end up. Not that you know what the end result is, right. but how beautiful it is to be going through something, knowing he's right there holding your hand. Right. And when you're going through that problem, that's like the farthest thing that you want someone to be telling you. Right. It, you're exactly right. <laughs> but there. that is really, really. I think that be, changes but, as we grow, as we yeah, get closer yeah. to him, though. Um, w- it may ha- be hard to look at that when we're going through something and someone's telling us that, but the closer we get to him, mm-hmm. we'll know that they're right. Right. It doesn't really matter. Most of the time you want to smack him in the face and say, Most of the time. stop, yes. get out of my face right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. But not that is, I have ever done anything. Like yeah. That. Well, there's a song out. Um, <clears throat> it's the words go. Um, if it's not good, then he's not done. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think that that's we, I think that with everything in life, we can come to the end and say it's done. And it's good, Mm -hmm. no matter what it is, because it's ordered by him. So if you don't go through some stuff, how are you ever going to be able to be resolute, Mm -hmm. resolved, firm? Right. Sure. How are how are you ever going to be able to do that? Daniel, um, his friends, Paul, all of these had gone through things and were reassured that God was able, able to what? Able to whatever he mm-hmm. wants, whatever God wants. Um, the outcome or the end result was not the main focus for any of these men. So they weren't looking at the end result. The main focus, the main focus that was that they believed God was going to be what God said he was going to be or said he would be. Um, they did not lean on their own understanding what they thought should be the outcome. In Daniel three sixteen. Through 18, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told King Nebuchadnezzar that they were not careful to answer him. 
that means they weren't unsure of what they were saying to him. It wasn't their words to him. They weren't they weren't meaningless. They they had backing to them. They were resolved. They said, if you do this, our God is able to deliver us from this fiery furnace and out of your hand. But if not, we are not going to serve you or your gods. They weren't saying, but if not, because they were unsure of God's capabilities. They were saying, but if not, because they weren't sure if God's plan was the same as Mm -hmm. their idea of how to handle the situation. But one thing was for sure. They believed, loved, adored, and were sure of the God they served, even to face to, to face enough to face the fiery furnace they were staring at and could feel the heat from. Okay, so they were standing there looking at the fiery furnace. They believed God enough, knowing what was going to happen, that he was going to take care of them. It didn't matter how it was going to happen. They just mm-hmm. knew that he was going to do that. Now, I think that there were things that led up to that. You know what I'm saying? So God had proved himself to them over and over and over again. And this was just one. Of, how did, how do you get to stand in front of a fiery furnace and be sure? Yeah. <laughs> how do you say we are not careful to answer you? You know what I'm saying? I, cause I, they knew their God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it takes going through some stuff to be able to, be firm and resolute in right. that. Are we sure enough of God to face the same thing with well, what's the resolution? song? Um, I've been through enough to know yeah. he's going to be in, he'll, yeah. he'll take care of me. Yes. It's like, but then another trial arises yeah. and we're like, Oh my gosh, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah. Didn't, didn't he take care of you the first time around? Didn't right. he take care of the second time around? But we always fall right back into that. Yes, we do. Oh, woe is me. What am I going to do? I agree with that. I think we're all guilty of that. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Isn't it funny that we see that um, someone has something and we think we want it. But once we find out what, what they had to, to do, oh, you yeah. know, that they had to go through to get it, we no longer are interested in obtaining it. Well, for instance, um, we had talked to, I, mean, I, I would love to write Christian songs, gospel, you know, be able mm-hmm. to sing them or whatever. But Gary and me had talked to Billy Fields one time and he basically said, and he writes some really good stuff. He's like, you got to go through and live this yes. to be able to write this. Yep. And it's like, Oh, okay. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. maybe I don't want to write any more yeah, songs. Yeah. Well, and that's why I've always said, there are some people that I, I dearly love listening to. And um, I've made this comment before. Um, some of the churches that they are affiliated with, um, I don't agree with like really don't agree with, but I'm, I'm trying to look more at the individual because how do you sing these words without knowing what you're, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right. What you're singing. A lot of these words come from their own experiences. So I'm trying to look past some of the things that I disagree with, which I think it's, you should be firm. You should be resolute and uncompromising in some things that pertain to God and, and standards and things like that. Um, but I'm trying to look at the person and say, this person's gone through some stuff. They know that the, the God that they serve because otherwise they wouldn't be able to right. be writing this stuff. Um, some really good songs out there with some really, really good words. Um, I came across this in my, the streams in the desert devotional this week. Um, I remember reading this. Yeah. It said, It is in the storm that God equips us for service. When God wants an oak tree, he plants it where the storms will shake it and the rains will beat down upon it. It is in the midnight battle with the elements that the oak develops its rugged fiber and becomes the king of the forest. When God wants to make a person, he puts him into some storm. The history of mankind has always has always been rough and rugged. No one is complete until he has been out into the surge of the storm and has found the glorious fulfillment of the prayer, Oh God, take me, break me, make me. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road, where I said this is what separates the women from the girls. We are saved for service. So we talked about this this morning. Well, we didn't talk about it. Pastor talked about it. Oh, plug in the pastor. Plug in it. Chris. 
<laughs> mm. There is no one that is saved that is not called into service. Your service may be your example. We talked about this in Sunday school this morning. Um, it was a very powerful Sunday school with the, the kids in um, the first and second graders, not, <laughs> not the 12th, not the 12th graders. Um, so, but we talked about how some of the uh, people that you come across, your example is going to be the representation of mm-hmm. Jesus to them. Um, so sometimes it's just simply um, the example that you're setting. Your example could determine the path that your family or friends take. Um, in re- reality, this is the responsibility of us all. Um, so I think we're all saved mm-hmm. um, for the service of being an example. Um, it is not enough to have the outward appearance, appearance of being resolute. That's not going to last. Um, you have to be actual. You have to actually be conditioned or exercised, and that means trials. Mm. Um, I came across this verse, James 1, um, 2, 2 through 4. Do you want to share that with them? Okay. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect the, and entire, wanting nothing. I love that. Um, I feel like this is a perfect picture of Daniel and the gang. Daniel and the gang. <laughs> I named them. And Paul. Um, they wanted for nothing. They had all they needed in the truth that God is who he says he is. And that was enough for them. Mm -hmm. Um, We like to think, well, they were lacking. They didn't have this or they didn't have that. Or, you know, Paul, he was, you know, he had a rough way to go. But the truth is, is he had everything that he needed in the truth that God was who he said he was. Um, Sometimes all it takes is that one tragedy Mm -hmm. to come upon you for you to go back to the base, which the base was seek ye first, um, for you to learn and be sure that God is enough. Right. Okay. Sometimes um, some of us have to go through several things, you know, over and over and over again. But sometimes it's just one thing, you know. So being resolute and learning how to do that. Um, and, and the thing that jolts us back to, um, the Matthew six thirty three is just one thing. Sometimes it takes more than that. So none of us does are the it, same. Does it on depend that. on how hard headed you are? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I think it, I think it really, really does depend on how, um, hard headed, hard hearted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, we like to use that Matthew six thirty three verse when it pertains to gaining, or prosperity like if you seek him first you will get everything else (laughs) i have to say that it pertains to all things um when sickness comes when tragedy strikes when your kids are wayward when you are unsure what the future holds when times are good when there is heat in the house and food on the table you can put your own when in there when we are seeking his kingdom and his righteousness continually in the good times and the bad, we will be resolved in the love, guidance, faithfulness, all of that that pertains to God, mm-hmm. that is God. Right. How to be... Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. End mm-hmm. of story. Okay. <laughs> done. We're done. Let's go. Well, when I was writing for the podcast, to me, it's like how to be resolute. It was it was like a, a no-brainer, I guess, in my, in my little simple mind. <laughs> so no matter what comes our way, we cleave to Jesus and nothing can draw us away from him. Right. But it is a day, a day to day process, I think. Yes. Unfortunately, just about everything in our Christian walk is a day to day process (laughs) because we have to beat the flesh down. Yeah. You know, daily. Yeah. Satan is going to throw darts at us at all the time. That will not change until we go to heaven, unfortunately. But how to how to avoid these darts hurting us and making us turn our flesh and not to him is the key to be resolute in everything. So the steps to this would be digging into his work constantly singing or listening to songs of praise which is one of my really big go-tos yeah, when you know not that i don't read and pray i'm not mm-hmm. telling you that but a lot of times it's like crank up the music yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. attending and being involved in church not just attending but being involved right that that to me is huge yes um praying even have some friends that you can turn to that can help you help you out um give you maybe some good biblical counseling or whatever yeah. if you are digging into his word 
you will know when Satan's darts are thrown at you and you can use his word to get through it. Believe me, this is a, this is a tough at times, <laughs> but God doesn't change. His word doesn't change. And his word is something we can stand on that is not wavering. Exactly. Now, I don't want to give the impression that if you are resolute in God, that you will do everything right all mm, the time. No. Uh, definitely don't want to do that because you won't. Right. Um, but it's very important to point out that God has made a way for you to do things right the first time, every time. We do have the choice, which is another thing we talked about in Sunday school this morning. Mm-hmm. David was called a man after God's own heart, but by God himself. We all know of the mistakes that David made. And when I say mistakes, they're sins. Okay. But David learned of the faithfulness of God every with every mistake and grew from them. We will still fall down and we are still going to falter. I'm sure we will, but we must continue to press on and keep our sights set on the one who is absolute. No time to have a pity party or stay down. I I see too many people like that. I just want to smack the tar out of them. Anyway, back to the thought. The world is watching us, whether we like it or not. (laughs) I say that all the time, but they are. The the sinners and the Christians alike, they are always watching us. Yes. And most of all, God is watching us. It's like, don't you want to be pleasing to the Lord? You know, do you think he throws things our way to see how we will act to them? Yeah. Like basically a test. Yes. I believe he does. And, you know, I think he knows. I think he knows how we're going to react. He he gives us the test so we can see how we were. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I don't always react the way I'm supposed to react. Okay. (laughs) Oops. If we fail that test per se, we ask for forgiveness, learn from it, and go on. Yes. Don't just waller in our self pity. Right. Maybe someday we can use it to help someone else who may be in the same place as you are, which is, I mean, you hear that all the time about mm-hmm. you are an example to other people by the way you live and by your trials. They always say like maybe you're going through this because in you know in the future you're going to be helping someone else along the way. It's true. You you but never I don't know. I really think it's a maybe. I think it's a for sure thing. I mean, I I. God has a purpose for everything that we go through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's hard to choke down. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it's really, really hard to choke down. I mean, when you have things going on with your kids, when you have things going on in your marriage, when you have things going on in your finances, there is a purpose for every single thing that Mm -hmm. God allows in your life. Because I've always had the saying, he's either allowing or he's causing. Right. That's what I've always Mm -hmm. said. And I firmly... I firmly believe that he's, and he has a purpose for each one, whatever he's allowing, whatever he's causing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I guess I would just challenge you. um, I challenge you to seek him and his righteousness first in everything. And in every situation, Uh, pastor preached once again, (laughs) uh, one Sunday that you don't have one part of your life that is dedicated to God and the other parts that are not. All of it is God's. That's the way some Christians try to live, though, yes, unfortunately. I know. And that, I that see is, it all the time. It's very, very sad. Mm-hmm. It all belongs to him, and it should be all be done for, for him. Um, if it all belongs to him, shouldn't we make that decision to seek him and his righteousness in all things, and therefore be firm, steadfast, obstinate, unwavering, admirably, admirably, <laughs> purposeful, (laughs) determined, constant, and resolute in him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that we have, we have that ability, right? He's given it to us Mm -hmm. um, to do that. Like I said, we're going to fail daily at that, but we would learn if we would learn early on that it's better, it's better for us. It's better for your mindset. I've uh, just uh, this morning I had, there's something that's going on and I'm like, I'm bad. But I'm not even mad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like because my flesh wants to be mad about something, but I'm not even mad. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Because I'm like, God's got this. He can He can take care of it. Right. And we just need to let him be what he's supposed mm-hmm. to be and seek him yeah, first. Definitely. Yep. So. That's all. That's all you got? That's all I got. That's all mm-hmm. I got. Um, well, that's February. Love. <laughs> We have someone that wants to be on our podcast. I'm not sure how it's going to be. Okay. We'll see. I don't know if it'll be next month or not. They come up and ask me if they could be on it. A child or Mm -hmm. an adult? A child. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I don't know. I know who you're talking about. So we'll see. I don't know if it'll be February or not. Okay. Well, 
we're going to have to have something to talk about then. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Till next time. See See ya. ya.